what is going on ladies and gentlemen welcome back to the channel my name is mark Roden, and today we are going to be going over eight new car features that i personally think suck okay i've had experiences with all of these features in the past and, and and i just don't like them i don't really see the purpose of them most of them aren't like bad you know what i mean like they're not like they're detrimental they're not going to cause for like problems but i just feel like they're absolutely pointless and if anything they do cause more problems than without having them if that makes any sense but anyway yeah that's what we're going over eight car, new car features that i think are pointless horrible and just useless all around guys really quick I want to tell you guys a quick little story. Skip a little bit ahead of the video if you don't want to hear this part. It freaking poured in my town last night and the basement flooded. So I was up until 9.30 a.m. doing that. And so I fell asleep at 9.30 a.m. and woke up at 4.30 p.m. It, I, feel like a, I feel like a loser right now. I get that it's because I had to do work, but still like, oh my God, dude, it was the worst thing ever. It was not fun at all. But anyway, let's get right to the video. Number eight, the eighth thing that i think is just absolutely pointless is those glass roofs that cover like the entire roof of the car that just don't open they're just there for glass why how often i have a sunroof in this car i've had a sunroof in my pt cruiser how often if you have a sunroof you know how often do you just drive around with just that part open and not the entire sunroof what's the point you don't want that this is what this is for i cover that up the only time i have that open is when i have the sunroof open having the glass there is just a problem and now obviously you could cover up the glass just like you can with this but what's even the point of ever opening that what's ever you know what i mean what's the point in having just the glass there like maybe if like you're on like a date with a girl and you're laying in the back of the car and you could use it to look up at the stars that's literally the only way i could think that it would be useful though i mean i, I don't know those glass roofs that just don't open uh, it's absolutely pointless in my opinion absolutely pointless the next thing is going to be fancy truck tailgates now this is obviously just for um trucks and most of them actually do kind of serve a purpose so like all right there's a truck right there so let's say that truck you drop the tailgate and half of the tailgate will drop down another layer that way it can be like a step so you can have like a step onto the upper tailgate that sounds cool in practice and it is cool i mean it, it, it's definitely probably helped some people out before in their past so i'm not gonna like i don't absolutely hate it but for the most part, I don't know about you guys, but whenever I'm doing work and I have like a truck full of stuff, usually that truck full of stuff, I want to get it out fast. And I don't usually actually climb into the bed. If I do climb into the bed, you just climb into the bed like a normal person. You don't need the step there. You could kind of just get in easily. Uh, it just, I just feel like it's another extra step, literally, um, in, that you don't really need in a truck when you're doing like work. You just want to get it done fast and having to make sure that that step goes down and also put the step back up before closing the tailgate just seems like a hassle i feel like it's just it's kind of useless there's also other things like some of them have cup holders and little compartments to put things in and uh i think it's i think it's pretty stupid anyway coming in at the number six spot and this one is one that i absolutely hate it's driver assist not self-driving cars okay self-driving cars i understand there might be an older person once again I think older people should have to go for the, like really old people should have to go for the to their license again. Um, and so if they have a car that drives itself, I'm, I'm honestly all for that. But driving assist, where it like kind of tries to help you stay in the lanes while on a highway or something. Yeah, no, I don't get that. That, that I don't really understand. It's, it's not that hard to keep your car in the lane, you know? And it's not like, oh Jesus, I missed third there. It's not like you just get to sit back and relax and let the car do the work because you still have to make sure that you're stopping and going on a highway um it doesn't really make it's it's i guess like yeah you can free up your hands and stuff um but you still it's like it's still illegal to use your phone in the car so what are you really gonna do you know it's you're just sitting there now like this like just watching i i don't really understand so it's like i don't know it, is it useful probably there's probably like i said there's probably a couple people out there that have used driver assist or use it frequently and they really appreciate it me personally i like driving my cars i don't have a problem with being on a highway and keeping it in the lane um and if you do need help keeping the car in the lane you probably shouldn't be having a license anyway 
Coming in at the number five spot though, next up on the list is the backup camera. Backup cameras are useful for sure and have I used them. Whenever I get in a car with a backup camera, I use the backup camera. So I wanna make that very clear. I do enjoy it sometimes, but I don't really think it's necessary. I actually think it's better for people not to have a backup camera or at least start on a car without a backup camera. That way they get used to using their mirrors and turning around to see what's behind them when reversing instead of just relying on the backup camera. Because I feel like people nowadays are heavily relying on this camera to tell them where everything is behind them and that's just not how the thing works. You still have to use your mirrors and look, the backup camera is just so that you don't bump into like a wall so you can get nice and close to the wall without hitting it. That's what that's for. It's not to actually help you fully do your reverse parking that you need to still use your your mirrors for that and people are kind of starting to forget that so if the backup camera will, is used responsibly and you know how to use it correctly then yeah i think it's useful for sure i've used them before and i like them but i don't think they're used correctly and i don't see that changing anytime soon i have a very funny feeling that if backup cameras stay the being the thing which is probably going to happen people are going to get into a lot more reverse accidents because they're not going to use their mirrors like they should when when reversing or even just turn your whole body around like what most people do but anyway next up at number four is going to just just a little bit of a weird one a, a pet peeve there's no real like thing here that i don't like about them i just don't really understand them it's those weird shift knobs nowadays cars cannot just have a normal like shift boot with a shift knob on the top of it the bmw obviously i'm talking about the automatics manual still have a normal uh like h pattern transmission shift boot and shift knob thing but with the automatics nowadays they have some weird things some of them have buttons so you like press the p button to put it in park or you press the d button to put it in drive some of them bmws in particular have this little like dial like you turn like a dial and put it in and it is so much more confusing than just using a normal automatic transmission shifter i don't really understand have you ever you oh my god i'm gonna go off have you ever used a bmw's weird dial shifter in an automatic it is a nightmare i don't I, it is so stupid to use i hate that thing i don't like it at all there's no point for it this is fine people aren't i don't think people were complaining about this i don't know i don't think we needed another dial in the car but we have one now it's just it's a little it's a little ridiculous now is it detrimental no is it going to hurt anybody no and it's just a personal preference but i like the normal shift knobs i like grabbing it and pulling it back it's easy it's simple and it doesn't get in the way or anything so i like them anyway coming in at third place the third most hated new car feature in my opinion is keyless entry slash push to start don't even get me started buddy don't even get me started you know what the world doesn't need more things to rely on batteries but you know what they did they gave us more things to rely on batteries it makes no sense what is what is so hard about sticking your key in the ignition and turning it to the right i know someone's going to be like well mark that sometimes a key will get stuck or a key will break or you can lose a key that's exactly the same thing with a keyless a keyless entry push to start vehicle you could still lose that key fob that key fob could still break the batteries can still go in that key fob it's this it's just no point on top of that there's so many people that uh, say that they have a lot of issues with keyless entry just not working all together and you like walk up to the car and it doesn't unlock it so they didn't have to manually open it anyway that's just more steps now <laughs> it's stupid and i want to say before people are like well mark just hates new cars no there are a lot of new features that i really like on new cars one thing I like on new cars is how on SUVs, you can walk up to the back bumper and wave your foot under it and it opens the trunk for you. I think that's really cool and very helpful when you're loading in something very heavy. But the, I, I, there are just so many stupid things like keyless entry that people like go on and on about being like the world's next best car part when in my opinion, they're absolutely pointless. Keyless entry, I don't think it causes more problems than just having a normal key. But I also don't think it's necessary. It, 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 there's no problem there whatsoever with normal keys. We didn't really need to make that shift. Anyway, coming in at second, and this is this is what I'm a little passionate about. I mean, obviously I'm passionate about all of them. I've been going off here. The second is the stop-start system. It's actually a perfect opportunity because I'm stopping. Cars nowadays, when you come to a stop like this, the car shuts itself off. And then when you go again, the car turns itself back on. Now, this is supposedly to help it save money on gas. 
how long are you sitting still for where you need the car to turn off to save you money on gas? You know how much money you're probably saving while a car's idling at a red light on gas by having a stop start button, start stop start function? Like 10 cents a month, dude. Okay, idling does not cost a lot of money at all. On top of that, you don't idle for that long. At least I hope you don't. Why are you, and then like some people are gonna say, oh, it's for traffic. How in the world is it for traffic? Traffic is stop and go. That means the car's constantly turning itself off and on, off and on. And you know what it does when a car has to turn itself on? It uses a lot of power. It uses a lot of power to get itself to turn over. It's not a really efficient method, I guarantee it. I guarantee they just came up with some weird idea or some company came up with an idea to make more money off of people by like saying, oh yeah, here's a great way to wear out your starter, um, but it saves you money on gas, so don't pay attention to the starter thing and think about how you're saving money on gas. And then they bring it into the shop and they give the shop more money every single time something breaks in it. And it's just, I don't really understand that feature. Now with some cars, I actually think you can just turn this off outright, which is really cool of the company to do that because it gives you the option. Um, but yeah, I don't think there was any necess necessity. I keep saying that word, but it's a good word. I like the word. Necessity is a handsome word. I don't think it was needed is what I'm saying. Oh my God, look at that, it's 350Z. That's a clean 350Z too, oh my goodness. That was a really nice looking Z. Anyway, next up in the first one, the number one spot, the thing that I think is the worst about new cars is all the freaking screens. I don't need my car to look like the Cinemax. I don't need to go in my car and think that I'm about to watch the new Spider-Man movie. I am okay with having screens. I wanna make that clear. Some screens are cool, I actually like them. I like the Audi A5 screen. It's pretty nice right there in the middle. I like some screens. But have you guys seen the new like Mercedes-Benz BMW 7 Series, all the really big fancy luxury cars nowadays? The entire like dashboard is just a big screen. Why? <laughs> what is wrong with the buttons? I get it makes you feel bougie at first, but over time, don't you feel like stupid? Doesn't it feel like you're just becoming like a robot in a way? Like there's no part of your life now that isn't technology? Wouldn't that annoy you? I feel like it would annoy me. Like I already watch TV quite a bit. I play video games quite a bit. I'm a YouTuber, so I'm looking at a camera all the time and I'm talking to things, editing videos. I don't need more screens in my life, man. I'm okay with the raw feeling of a speedometer and buttons to press. I like that. Yeah, sure, it might be good once to drive it once and feel a little fancy. That that that's good, I guess. Um, but besides that, like after that, I would get pretty freaking annoyed, man. Everybody like looked at me so angrily. I wonder if something's like hanging off my car. Everybody back there was just looking at me like an angry person. But anyway, yeah, that's about it. I mean, touch screens, I, I, I don't mind them at all, obviously. And I think cars do benefit from having touch screens in them. A couple small touch screens. Um, but I think when they're, what they're doing now with like everything being a screen is way too much overkill. Um, but anyway, that's about it. Thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate it. Let me know what other videos you'd like to see. We are running on 13 minutes. So actually, that's perfect timing. But uh, thank you guys so much for watching. I love you, each and every one of you. Das Vidanya, and have a nice night.